Phi, one of the most fundamental mathematical constant that we encounter early in our life, comes from the very basic shape, circles, which are everywhere in nature, the ripples of water, the orbits of planets, in the very structure of galaxies, it's woven into the fabric of the universe. Where after the first universal constant we intuitively discover. Pi is simply the ratio of circle circumference to its diameter. This means if you unfold the perimeter of a perfect circle, it will fit three diameters exactly with a tiny bit left over. But here is the catch. That's not how we actually compute pi. Measuring a circle directly, no matter how precise our tools, always lead to errors. Engineer might use 3.14 or even just 3, and to the naked eye, a circle will still look perfect. But mathematicians, they aren't satisfied. They want infinite precisions. For centuries, the quest for pi accuracy has driven both mathematics and computing, leading to formulas that almost look unnatural, some even downright terrifying in their complexity. Even with the fastest algorithm we have today, in 2022, Google managed to compute over 100 trillion digits. And guess what? That required 82,000 terabytes of storage and over 200,000 in electricity costs. You can read the whole article by Google in the descriptions. At this point, you might be wondering why. Why does Pi get so ridiculously complicated? Answer is precision. And why do we even need to compute more and more digits? While well, computing pi isn't just about math for the sake of math, there is much bigger reason behind it, and that's what exactly we will explore in this video. To understand why pi is important and why we keep chasing more and more digits of pi, we have to look back in time. The journey of pi discoveries spanned thousands of years, and we can divide its history into three main eras. The first breakthrough in computing pi came from Archimedes around 250 BC. Before Archimedes, civilizations such as Babylonians and Egyptians approximated pi through direct measurements. However, these methods were experimental and they lacked precision. Archimedes took a completely different approach. Instead of measuring circles, he trapped circles between two polygons, one inside and one outside, and he measured the polygon length. He started with a hexagon and doubled the number of sides, making the shape increasingly circular. By the time he reached 96 polygon, he calculated the following bounds for pi. This was the most accurate estimate of pi over 1500 years. The fraction 22 over 7, popularly used in school as an approximation, come from the Archimedes work. Even by 1630s, after centuries of refinement, the best polygon-based calculations could only determine pi to 39 decimal places. And just to achieve that, polygon method required millions of sides, and this was inefficient and mathematicians needed a new approach. In 17th century, the discovery of calculus transformed how pi was computed. Mathematicians replaced symmetric approximations with infinite summations. Newton computed pi with our polygon for the first time. He represented pi using an integral of the quarter circle, expanding the function as a binomial series. For the deeper dive, Veritasium has a very fantastic video on this topic. Check it out. This was a game changer, but the quest for pi continued. The breakthrough came in 1706, when John Matching, inspired by the Arc 10 series, introduced an algorithm that converged much faster. This converged 100 times faster than the basic Arc 10 series and Newton's formula. Using it, Matching calculated pi to 100 decimal places by hand. For over two centuries, mathematicians followed in Matching's footsteps, manually pushing pi further digit by digit. By the 20th century, mechanical computers were already invented, which rapidly accelerated the pi calculations. We no longer needed pi computations by hand. The first major leap happened in 1949, when the ENIAC computer calculated 2,037 digits of pi in just 70 hours. As computing power grew, so did pi records. In 1973, computers pushed past 1 million digits. 1980s, mathematicians realized older formulas were too slow for the modern computers. A new era of computation had begun. We are currently in the third era of pi calculations. It began around 1980 when mathematicians discovered how to utilize a combination of three independent developments. First, the fast Fourier transform algorithm significantly sped up multiplication. 
an essential operation in all Pi computations. With FFT, multiplying long numbers became nearly linear in time, drastically reducing computation time per Pi. Second major breakthrough was the development of new high-performance algorithms specifically designed for the Pi. Srinivasa Ramanujan discovered miraculous formula for Pi which convert far faster than the previous methods like Machen's formula. Each term of the series added eight decimal places. This formula looks strange in two ways. First, it gives the reciprocal of pi, not pi itself. And second, Ramanujan had no proof for the formula. Unlike Archimedes, Newton, or Machin, who did our formulas from geometry and calculus, Ramanujan simply wrote this down from intuition. Ramanujan never provided a formal proof for it. Yet decades later, mathematicians confirmed he was right all along. Later in 1989, the Chudnowski brothers modified Ramanujan's method and optimized the series even further. Each term in the formula adds 15 decimal digits, twice as fast as Ramanujan's. Third, supercomputer advances made it possible to explore pi to billions and then trillions of digits. 1989, the Chudnowski brothers calculated 1 billion digits, a world record at the time. Since then, the algorithm has evolved into more and more optimized versions. 1999, pi was computed to 68 billion digits. 2019, Google Cloud is 31.4 trillion digits. And latest, in 2022, the record hit 100 trillion digits. For decades, the goal was to compute pi from the beginning to as many digits as possible. But since 1990s, researchers have shifted their focus to a new challenge, computing individual digits at extreme positions without needing all previous ones. A major breakthrough came in 1995 with the discovery of the BBP algorithm. For the first time, this formula allowed research to compute the hexadecimal digits of pi without calculating all previous digits. However, this method only works for the hexadecimal and binary digits. We still don't have an efficient way to compute individual decimal digits of pi. Today, pi has been computed to over 100 trillion digits, but how far can we go? With the rise of quantum computing, it's possible that maybe one day we compute pi as it speeds unimaginable today. Even AI is starting to play a role in pi computations. AI model can analyze massive data sets of pi digits to search for hidden structures or patterns. For the most real world application, we don't actually need trillions of digits of pi. In fact, just 10 digits are enough for engineers and scientific calculations. 39 digits are enough to calculate the volume of the observable universe to atomic precision. Even high-precision physics simulations, space explorations, and quantum mechanics really require more than a few hundred digits. And yet, we continue to compute pi to trillions of digits. So why do we do it? One of the biggest reasons is testing computers and algorithms. Computing pi requires an enormous number of calculations, trillions of arithmetic operations, which makes it perfect stress for the modern computers. In fact, companies like Intel and AMD have used pi calculations to detect hidden errors in the processors before releasing them to the public. If a CPU or supercomputer can compute pi correctly for trillions of digits, it means the hardware is stable and reliable. But it's not just about testing hardware. Mathematicians are also searching for hidden patterns in pi digits. Despite computing trillions of digits of pi, no repeating pattern has ever been found. But could there be a hidden structure? Could pi be linked to deep undiscovered properties in the number theory? By computing more and more digits of pi, researchers are analyzing pi statistically and searching for clues to its nature. The quest for pi is also a global challenge, a battle for mathematicians, programmers, and supercomputers. Every new world record invites someone to break it. It's a symbol of mathematical curiosity and human achievement. And perhaps, more importantly, pi is one of the few mathematical constants that captivates the public. It has been studied for over 4,000 years, and yet, it remains mysterious and infinite. As long as these mysteries remain, the quest for pi will never end. That brings us to the end of this video. Before we wrap up, there is still so much more than we could cover here. If you are curious to explore further, check out the books and sources I refer to while making this video. You will find all links in the description. So next time you see pi written as 3.14159 and so on, just remember, behind those digits lies a story of thousands of years of discovery. Thank you for watching and happy pi day.